Well, thanks again for the invitation. And um, as uh, Stephanie said, um, we do not really work on specific sex differences. And uh, by, while preparing for this lecture, I specifically looked for you know male and female differences in, in, in the research that we were doing. And so far, we didn't really find any differences. So that, the reason is because we don't really work on this, on behavioral, um, um, using behavior essays where it's more apparent, but more on the molecular and cellular level where, where things seem to be more similar. Um, so I would like to start with this, with this beautiful oil painting by Lucas Cranach, the Elder, which, which really struck me how, how visionary people have been um, you know, over 500 years ago. And I um, just would like to go um, uh, with you th through, this, uh, through this pointing here where, where you see that elderly women are carried Oh, here, uh, uh, carried um, to, to, this, to this water here or, or, or brought in, in, in carriages and sort of large amounts. Then they're placed into this water and out they come as beautiful young um, girls where they are welcomed by handsome knights and led to various places that we, we may not want to go into further detail. Um, <laughs> And uh, again, preparing for this lecture, it struck me that you know, every single human uh, subject in this pool is actually female, not male. So it seems to be more important to rejuvenate um, females than males, which I guess there's, there's a certain point in there. So um, what I'll try to convince you in the next 10, 15 minutes or so is that um, even though we are still, of course, far away from this you know, ultimate dream, to, um, to rejuvenate entire organisms. However, we have made quite some progress on the cellular level. Um, so let me start with um, the um, sort of this hierarchical tree of embryonic development, which is really fascinating. And in particular, that a single cell, the fertilized oocyte, the fertilized egg, has the entire potential to develop in, into a fully mature organism that consists of many, many, many different cell types, brain, liver, heart, and so forth. And um, we know now um, that all these different cell types have the exact same genetic information. So what really makes a difference between those uh, cell types is uh, what we call the epigenetic information. So anything that is sort of not encoded in the actual sequence of, of the DNA, but associated with, 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 gene, with genes and gene expression. And um, molecularly speaking, we know today of two major components of this epigenetic regulation. One is uh, direct methylation um, of the DNA. And in, in million, um, this is usually cytosine methylations. And the other component is um, various modifications of, of these little tails here of histones, which are, the, which are the protein complexes where the DNA is wrapped around. So, um, um, historically, this, this, um, this, this, I mentioned this hierarchical organization of, of embryonic develop, development has been, um, um, been conceived as a really a one-way road. So once you differentiate, once you, once you acquire more um, uh, specialized traits, um, these, uh, you cannot go back anymore. You can't, you can't really jump. Um, back from, from being, a, where is it, a, a, here, a, a neuron, back to, um, to a more primitive neuro precursor cell or, or perhaps even all the way back to, to some sort of a very early embryonic stage. However, um, the last um, 15 or so, 20 years, um, we have uh, seen that this concept is actually totally wrong. And in principle, it is possible to what we call reprogram a fully mature cell all the way back to a pluripotent or a very early uh, embryonic state. And that has been accomplished using three um, different methods. One method is uh, known as nuclear transfer. Um, and in mammalian, this was um, done the first time with, um, in, in sheep. Dolly the sheep is probably um, known to almost everybody in the room, uh, which was the first, anim the first cloned animal in that way. And, and how this works was to take a um, uh, some uh, uh, nucleus from a from a specialized adult cell. In case of Dolly, it was a mem memory, uh, mem memory epithelial cell, and placed into a previous previously enucleated um, oocyte, which then um, was reconstituted as, as an early embryo and, and grafted into a pseudo pregnant um, host, and was allowed to, 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 develop, to, to develop into into a um, into a normal um, in the sheep. 
However, this reprogramming could also be achieved when you fuse um, a adult um, cell, adult somatic cell, with um, embryonic stem cells, which are cells derived from this very, very, very early uh, embryo. And um, the, um, um, the nuclear um, environment, if you want, of these embryonic stem cells were really dominant and opened up the, um, the, um, the genes that are responsible for becoming a pluripotent cell in this, in this somatic cell. So cell fusion also is a way to reprogram cells. And more recently, uh, in the year 2006, Shinya Yamanaka identified, in fact, just four factors which are listed here. I guess my laser pointer is here. Um, OCT4, SOX2, CMYK, and KLE4, which could mimic um, both the fusion and this nuclear transfer experiment. So by just simply adding these four factors to um, a, a skin-derived fibroblast, these skin, these skin cells um, reprogram in the culture dish into these embryonic stem cell-like cells that, that Shinya uh, Yamanaka called IPS cells or induced pluripotent cells. Um, so, um, in particular with this um, IPS cell reprogramming, um, one clear difference between male and female actually is um, that male, um, as, as you probably know, males are XY, they carry one X chromosome, whereas female cells uh, carry two X chromosomes. And in order to, to um, uh, compensate for this, for this uh, uh, imbalance in dosage, in female cells, one X chromosome is randomly picked and inactivated. And that is uh, associated with, with gigantic um, reorganizations of this, of this, of this chromosome. Uh, and, and the molecular mechanisms are around these epigenetic Mars that, that I just introduced to you earlier. So um, this X chromosome is heavily methylated. It's, it's coded by, by a non-coding RNA called EXIST and really set, set um, aside for no use for, uh, for, for the cells. And obviously, uh, in males, we don't have a problem. So um, when we want to reprogram uh, a male fibroblast, nothing really has to change. Uh, this X chromosome is always, always active. So these iPS cells, uh, they, um, they are, are of, of course, also have, have active X and Y. However, in female, this is different because female embryonic stem cells, the very early embryo, interestingly enough, have two active uh, X chromosomes. So for some reason, um, this pluripotent state is compatible with the, uh, with the full expression, with the full activity, if you want, of both X chromosomes. So when you reprogram now a somatic skin cell into these embryonic-like cells, what has to happen in females is that the other X chromosome has to be activated. And I just uh, briefly alluded to how um, complex really this, this, um, this, uh, uh, this X chromosome inactivation is and you know, how molecularly tight this really is. So this is really a huge task to really open up an entire chromosome. And surprisingly enough, <coughs> this, this works just fine. So as I said in the beginning, uh, even though there is a fundamental difference in the reprogramming, what really needs to be accomplished between male and females, but for some reason, all these three essays or all these approaches, how to reprogram cells, they do um, a, a really good job in, in, in reprogramming both males and females. And the next slide is just um, a data slide here to, um, to, which demonstrates that the female uh, reprogramming works well and the X chromosome is properly activated. So maybe for the uh, for brevity, you just ignore the please ignore the first row. But here um, you see nuclei of various um, cells or cell types. Here um, you see the fibroblasts. Those are um, um, female iPS cells, and those are female ES cells, and those are male ES cells. And this is the same um, panel is true here. And those are in situ hybridizations for exist which is coding the, um, the um, um, inactive, um, inactive uh, uh, X chromosome and T6, which is, which is expressed when the, um, when the X chromosome is, is, uh, is, is, is being inactivated. So the T6 and X are complementary, um, um, uh, complementarily expressed. And as you, as you can see very nicely here, of course, in this, in this fibroblasts, one X chromosome is inactive, so you see this, this X chromosome coded by EXIST. When you reprogram these cells into iPS cells, the signal is gone, so this EXIST um, 
uh, pattern is, is not detectable anymore. So presumably the extramuros is unfolded and inactive. But you gain this marker T6 here. Sorry, this laser is weak. Uh, um, these, these two spots here uh, suggesting that this both, um, both X chromosomes express T6 and that's why it's, uh, uh, that is responsible for actually activating those. <coughs> so I, I find a very, very remarkable um, uh, phenomenon. So we then, after the um, discovery of the, uh, this IPS array programming, we in our lab specifically asked, well, is this reprogramming really unique to, um, um, uh, to pushing cells um, into more primitive lineages, or can you also push these cells into other directions? And so th this hypothesis is, is nicely illustrated by this, this very famous landscape put uh, forward the first time by Conrad Waddington, in the, in the, uh, a theoretical uh, biologist in the, in the 1950s, uh, where he compared uh, the differentiation of a cell to a ball running down this landscape here. And this here would be normal development. You start at the very top as a cell and you roll down this, 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 this uh, landscape here with valleys and you have to make a couple of decisions, whether you go left or right or left or right. And those decisions are irreversible. Um, because the, um, you cannot go ag against gravity. Um, and the um, reprogramming examples I've showed you so far um, demonstrate that you can actually push this ball, this ball all the way back. So the same path as it's taking, uh, you, can, you can reach the, the, the summit again. And what we asked is, well, once you're down there in this valley, it's okay, we have shown that you can push the ball back to a common branch point or maybe all the way up, but can you also directly jump over such a huge barrier and, and uh, a settle fate or a sandwich barrier directly into another cell type? And we specifically asked whether we can convert skin cells, skin-derived fibroblasts into postmetodic neurons. And um, to cut a long story short, we were successful. We started with um, a couple dozen uh, candidate factors, <coughs> introduced those into, into mouse embryonic fibroblasts, and, um, and had uh, some um, genetic reporter essay, in this case, a, a tau, e, a tau um, label uh, hooked up with a green first and protein, and identified <coughs> after some back and forth that just three factors are sufficient to induce um, a ton of these uh, very much neuronal-like looking cells. Um, and this is a uh, representative example here, how these dishes look like, stained with, with an antibody to, to detect uh, neuronal-like cells. So it was a very, looked like a very, very efficient process. And we, because we had so many of these cells, we could further characterize them and, um, and uh, saw that not only this one marker and tau is expressed, but a, a whole battery of neuronal markers was induced in these cells. And, and of course, they also had the neuronal morphology. But most importantly, the cells not only looked like neurons and, um, and expressed a couple markers, they also had the um, principal functional properties of neurons, such as the generation of action potentials, which is shown here on the, on the bottom right, and their ability to form a synaptic contacts with each other or when, uh, when co-cultured with primary brain-derived neurons with, with those primary neurons. <coughs> So the next question we asked is whether this can also work in human fibroblasts. And uh, we had to optimize the uh, culture conditions quite a bit and also had to add one more factor, NeuroD, to, the, to this cocktail of three factors that worked in the mouse. And we saw in principle this is also possible. And uh, this is just uh, one example of, 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 of a cell here which actually looks uh, uh, very beautiful. I guess there is no other laser pointer, right? So I just have to describe to you the green cell down there in the, in the right. Looks really spectacularly nice, like, like a neuron. And, and, and the upper traces here um, are electrophysiological recordings demonstrating that these cells can receive synapses from, from other, other neurons. So it is possible also to generate these cells from human fibroblasts. And the next question is I've briefly or introduced to this, these pluripotent stem cells already, which, which are around quite a bit. So we also wondered whether we can generate similar type of cells uh, um, using these pluripotent cells as, as a starting cell population. And um, as some of you may know, that the differentiation of these uh, pluripotent cells into neurons is actually a very, very lengthy and tedious process um, and, and very, very inefficient. You need to wait for months or so to, to, to see any 
spontaneous uh, synaptic activity in the cells. So we, we, th we through these uh, reprogramming factors that we had identified in these, fi in these fire blast conversion systems at these pluripotent cells, and we're really stunned to see that in within a few days, we saw already neuronal properties, both uh, morphologically up there seen with, with uh, just, a, just a regular phase contrast, as well as some, some immune stainings. And also these cells very, very rapidly, um, as early as six days after treatment, these, these cells fired already these repetitive action potentials, apparently a very a fairly mature uh, neuronal um, 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 maturation stage already. So um, again, as I said, preparing for this talk, we uh, it was sort of looking, can, can, did we actually compare female and, and male, male cells there? And um, first, of course, I looked into the um, into into our human fibroblast lines, whether you know we, we whether we happen to have reprogrammed a male and female line. Turned out that all we used are human foreskin fibroblasts, and apparently those are all male. So we, I couldn't really <laughs> share with you any any insights. Um, however, we uh, um, in the in the last um, uh, part that I showed you, where we introduced the transcription factors into these pluripotent uh, stem cells, we did um, compare a, a, a number of different lines, and it happened so that one line was male and two lines were, were female, and um, um, so I didn't actually know the sex be before before I prepared this talk. But what I didn't know before is that there were there was um, you know after ex ex excessive um, both morphological, biochemical, and um, functional characterizations as, as shown here uh, with really a panel of assays, we cannot see any differences in, in, in these three lines. So apparently on this on this sort of cellular level, um, you know both male and and, and female neurons are are just fine at making at firing action potentials and receiving synaptic input, which is perhaps not so surprising. Okay, so finally, I would like to thank um, all the people who contributed to this work. Uh, many people in, in, in my lab, which are uh, listed on, 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 um, on the left, we are very closely working together with uh, Tom Sutov's lab and a couple postdocs um, in, in his lab who, who primarily um, were responsible for the functional characterizations of, of these cells. And we also collaborate on, on, on other projects with, with various people here, here at Stanford and, and abroad. And of course, the important funding agencies uh, that support our work as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.